Hi, I'm Brenton, and today's practice is geared towards headstand. So everything you need to know about headstand you can find here in this practice. And the first thing to know about it is whether you're a good candidate to go all the way into the pose because the pose has so many progressions all the way up to it. You want to make sure that you're working in the right one for your body. So the first thing to do is to test, is my upper arm long enough for the pose? So the pose requires the forearms to be on the floor and your hands cupped behind your head like this. So test it out right now. And then just squeeze in as best you can. We'll talk about that one next. But as you squeeze in now, lift your forearms out from your shoulders and try to take this movement more from your shoulders and your arms, less from your spine. So watch this curling in action and this flailing open action. And those are both okay, but it's just telling you that your spine is moving to get your arms to do the work and you wanna get your spine really still because that's the pose. And now if your forearms are lifted above your head, then you know that you're safe to move into the posture because the forearms are gonna want to absorb the majority of the weight and you're not gonna wanna put too much weight on your skull and you'll probably feel that in your own practice too. Now if your upper arm bones are just kinda too short, some people's bodies are built like that, don't worry, you still have poses to do along the way. And the <coughs> inversion you're gonna be working towards is more of a forearm stand, if that's something you're gonna choose to pursue. So something where the skull is comfortably lifted away from the floor so that it's not asked to absorb any weight whatsoever. Now, the second thing is with the elbows. So if you take your hands behind your head, test this, like how much can you squeeze the arms in? Okay, and you wanna let the arms wing totally in. And if you're more out here, that's okay, but make sure that the trajectory is in, so that's what you're following, okay? And again, you wanna let this be in your shoulders and in your arms, not in your spine. So keep your spine neutral, everything you know to be true of Tadasana. Lift out of the pelvis with your ribs. I'm assuming if you're trying a headstand, you've done a Tadasana. And uh, that's it, release. Okay, so we'll get started in tabletop position. And the props you'll need for your practice are a strap. So you can definitely grab one of those. And then if you're tighter in the hamstrings, you'll wanna grab a couple of blocks as well. And without further ado, let's meet in tabletop position. And we just wanna get the shoulders really loosened up here. So we'll be able to feel them as we start to work deeper. So flow through a few cat cows. Let the emphasis of these movements be on the shoulder blades. So the inhale, like really create a trench in the upper back. And on the exhale, really let the shoulder blades wing off and draw the chin in. And start breathing deeper here too. Okay, then we'll come back to neutral spine. And from here, we'll thread into a twist. So you can start by keeping your right hand grounded. Inhale, stretch left arm up. And then exhale, we'll thread all the way down. This might be enough for some people in the forearm. It's still early. Or you can thread all the way down. Relax your skull. And then wing your right um, elbow, that's the word, up towards the sky. And as that happens, try to move that right shoulder so that it stacks right on top of the left. And so as a result, this part of your body starts to move up towards the ceiling and you get really long. And from here, come up. It's good to like do the stretch again, so that can be nice. And then as you sit down, take the other side. So with the left hand grounding, wing the left elbow up, and then drop the left shoulder blade towards the right and try to move that more into a vertical relationship. So one stacked over the other. Keep trying to spin your right rib cage down to the floor as if you were sweeping it towards your inner left knee. When you're ready, come back. 
a little stretch, and down. Before downward facing dog today, stretch the hands all the way forward for puppy. Melt the heart down to the floor, get a little bit of space there. And it doesn't have to be so specific here, like I'm really pressed back onto my thighs, but your thighs can be more back. And then walking the hands in. Now we should feel pretty alive back there. So that's just kind of the goal of the warm up. And then we'll take the warm up into downward facing dog. So try here, bend the elbows, get your fingers hard to the floor. So the hands without <laughs> stressing you out <laughs> should feel like they're grab grabbing onto stress balls. It's except for instead of grabbing onto a round thing, they're grabbing onto a flat thing and then bend the elbows and wrap them in. So that was what we did up here. We tried to squeeze the elbows in. Downward facing dog. Tilt the sitting bones way up to the sky. So what the other thing we'll see with headstand is that headstand is funny because it itself, the pose itself, doesn't require the hamstrings to be open, but the entrance pose requires the hamstrings to be really open. And the best way to open them, i found, is really to get some buoyancy in the feet, lift your heels, bend your knees, and then press your sitting bones way up. So what we're doing is we're freeing the top part of the hamstring, right where it attaches onto the sitting bones. In the front of your body, it's gonna feel like the front of the pelvis is folding down, which it is, and then relax the back of the neck and relax the chin. And then keep the pelvis tilting like this as you now ground through the heels and stretch your thigh bones back. Maybe they go to straight. If you're tight in the hamstrings, I bet they'll stay pretty bent. And then come forward plank. So that was a lot of shoulder opening. Now it's time for shoulder stability. So hopefully we're okay at this part of the practice. Now, if plank pose is also kind of you're working on that one lower down to the knees and you want yourself stretched forward so tabletop is back here tape plank with knees down is tabletop stretch forward belly catches it from here ground the right hand lift the left arm up and now push out through right fingers so we're getting really stable through the upper back and then we'll take a really strong twist here as we reach through Okay, inhale, we stretch up. And exhale, we take it down. So if that was too much, again, take it with the knees down. It's the same thing. It's inhale, stretch up. Exhale, sweep through. Get really lifted through that left armpit and reach right fingers, get the skull long. Inhale, take it up. And exhale, take it down and then come on down for child's pose. And take these next couple of exhales out through the mouth. What we're doing in that is we're just strengthening the part of the shoulder that's going to be really uh, called, called upon to be strong in the pose. So from here, we'll come back to downward facing dog. We'll continue towards our standing postures. Walk the feet to the hands for standing forward fold, Uttanasana. Separate your feet as wide apart as feels good. You can anchor the toes in. Always make your movement choices based on what gives you a real comfortable experience. So soften the knees and let the whole upper body drape over the lower half. You can rock your weight forward, backward in the feet, and then center totally, still yourself totally at center. If it feels good on the upper back, let's learn to release this. So as we start to strengthen these muscle areas for headstand, we're not taking with us any knotting or tension that we might be holding in those areas. So totally relax the back of your neck and your chin down away from your body. And then give a little bit of weight to your arms. Like without your skin to keep it in, they would just fall off. Hang by your back ribs. 
and gently releasing fingertips to the floor. We'll take our halfway lift cycles from here. So everybody's at a different height on the inhale. Integrate the shoulders on the back. So that means draw them together, but lengthen the back ribs forward. And then exhale, fold. Just go a, a few times on your own breath. You're starting to free up that hamstring attachment the same way that we were in downward facing dog. So really feel that exhale initiated these frontal hip bones here melting down to the thighs. So we get the hamstrings really pliable like saltwater taffy so that they're really usable for us in the pose. So without them, we don't really have a headstand. So take your halfway lift. And then on the exhale, come on up. Heel toe your feet in, just wherever they feel comfortable, and then build Tadasana. Set the arm bones to the back plane of the body. Lift the back ribs, press down through the feet, lift up. And then we'll open the shoulders. So let's grab our straps. If you don't have a yoga strap, you can just use a belt from your closet. And let's get our shoulders unmistakably warm. Like you can feel every little muscular element to it. So take your strap pretty wide in your arms. Let me give you the profile view of this. Set your spine in line and it's natural four curves. Press down with your feet. Now we wanna to try to let the arms and shoulders be free and mobile even when the spine is stationary. And that takes a little bit of practice, um, especially because we're not so used to moving our spines and shoulders in all of the ways they were designed to move. So watch yourself as you take the strap up. Try not to go into a back bend or for some reason a back arch. You know, I see this one too with the butt scooping forward. So try to get yourself totally in line and you might widen your strap and then you just take it to a point of resistance. Like maybe you're maxed out here, maybe you're already maxed out, that's okay. And some of you might be able to drop the strap all the way behind. And now we just go in and out of this to your heart's content. <laughs> and what we're looking for here is just to get acquainted with this area. Like is one of your shoulders stronger? Are you lifting up one side of the strap faster or slower? Is one arm dominant? Is it easier on one of them? Then look at your standing body. Are your ribs trying to bust open as you bring the strap up? And if they are, like what can you really do about it, right? Well, you can do bent elbows. You can try not taking the strap back so far and really working on holding the torso in. And then you're getting all the strength elements that keep you in your integrated position. Now, we should be feeling pretty warm here, so that's awesome. Let's release the strap and let's finish our standing poses because it's always nice to have some standing poses to get the integration going before we try to get upside down. Because if we can't do it while we're standing, what are we doing? So release your strap and then we'll join up in a high lunge on the right. So however you like to get there, if you wanna take your fold and step back, I'm just gonna move left foot back and then wiggle it. Make sure that the shoulders are set right over your pelvis, front pelvis draws in, and then sweep up through your legs and sweep down into the right knee. Now watch this blossom, right? So lift from the back ribs, get that back knee higher, sit down more full, more fully, take the arms up. Stretch from your back ribs up. And that's why it's nice to like practice taking your arms up the front line of your body and see if that feels different at all. 
And here's the pose here. We're going to take the hands together. We're going to come to prayer twist. So you can always take this back knee down. Don't feel bad about that. And then left elbow, right knee. Once you get the anchoring here and you sit down, now uh, root your fingers more than your wrists. Lift your heart up to your thumbs. Heart up to the thumbs. Draw the shoulder blades together on the back and lengthen like crazy from the tailbone out through the skull. Lift through this back leg. Sit way deep. And release. So what are we working on there? We're working on freeing the torso and the abdomen because you need a little bit of openness when you go into that posture. You're also working on integrating the shoulders when they're in different relationships to all these body areas. So the more we understand this, the easier it's going to feel in the pose itself. Take that back foot back. So now you just come into high lunge on your other side. Okay, and you take all the time that you want to get yourself elevated into the lunge and then deep into it, arms up. And when you're ready from here, take the hands down. Take the right elbow to the left knee. Prayer twist. So draw the shoulder blades together on the back. Twist out to your toe rather than back to your hip. Your back leg is strong. Your legs learn to squeeze in to the pelvis. And when you can recruit that, that is actually the core work of headstand. So recruit the legs into the pelvis, then stretch the navel out, out, out towards the toe and release. And step the back foot forward. Take a big inhale halfway. And exhale, come up to stand. Okay, second pose, pyramid pose. This might be where, if you're tighter back here, you might like some blocks. Even if you're not tight, per se, what's the harm of having blocks, you know? If you want to get deeper, just bend your elbows. So start in pyramid pose. Your right foot is forward. Your left foot is back with the toes slightly outturned. Start in your hip extension here. So that should feel really nice. Hip extension is when you ground your back foot and boom, drawing through this left hip flexor, and then lift way up. Now some people might be bendy. Be your bendy self if you're bendy in your joints. Just make sure that you feel good. So investigate and know that that's always a tool you can use. Then come forward into your pose. So root through your feet, squeeze your legs back like this way as you extend and lengthen your heart, the whole muscle of it, out and down, out beyond the toe, and then down towards the toe. Squeeze your legs up. You wanna get good about manipulating your pelvis in these forward folds. That's really like the joy and the gem of it. So really tilt that front pelvis forward. Again, you can bend the knee to get that to happen. And some people feel it like more sitting bones high. And then come on up and switch your sides. Another trick is if you're losing balance, wider. If you're feeling tighter, closer together, come on down. Squeeze those thighs back away from the pose. Stretch the heart out and down to the toes, out and down. And in your forward fold, release through the back of the neck and the chin. And so we're really just freeing up the back of the legs so that they're able to explore headstand. When you're ready, step forward. Come all the way on up to stand. Last pose in our standing series is a forward fold. So step your feet slightly wider than the hips with the toes turned in. Soften into the knees and relax your upper body over your lower body. So we're just finishing that nice open hamstring work with a little bit more to seal in the deal. Relax the back of your head and your chin evenly down. 
And then to take the shoulder stretch here, take the hands, start them at the low back, and then wrap your upper arms toward each other. Try to create a nice trench in your shoulder blade area. And then if it feels good from there, keep the upper arms squeezing together. You can interlock the hands. With a micro bend in the elbow, take the bind to the sky and overhead. Keep dropping the back of your head and your chin. And P.S. If this is too much, grab your strap from earlier and stretch your hands wide along the strap and then you'll feel that same awesome chest stretch and upper back squeeze. Okay, hands down. And then we will work down on the floor. Now we'll get into the poses that are the prep building poses in the shoulders for headstand. So these are the poses that are really gonna command the strength. And these are gonna be the ones that you're gonna see like where you should stop along the way of this pose. So it should give you enough information when you study how you're moving so that your practices become very efficient and they feel very present and like you're working at the edge of your skill set, what you were designed to do right now. So without further ado, let us come down for Sphinx Pose. Elbows underneath the shoulders, fingers wide. Now one of the properties of headstand is that the elbows need to energize toward each other. And a lot of times they like to splay open and splay out. So if you know you're one of those people, set the elbows as wide as they want to splay out, okay? But then splay the hands out much wider than that. And that's gonna help them energetically hug towards each other. So it's okay if they're wide, but what's their energy doing? It wants to hug towards each other. Now if you're pretty cool with elbows underneath the shoulders and you can get the squeeze in, take the forearms parallel, and no matter where you are with the hands, uh, stretch out through the fingers, push down, and now squeeze the elbows toward your body, and move the back of your heart forward to the front wall of your chest. Take the chin down to neutral with the throat and pull the throat back in space. And now let's command our deep belly muscles, so the ones that are potentially very useful for us in headstand as they help to assist hold us, holding us upside down. So this is the inhale. Exhale, lower abdomen squeezes up, pelvis and thighs lift. Inhale, set that down nice and easy so you keep the contraction as you pull through. And exhale, squeeze in. Three more. Okay, soften the pelvis down, take the hands to stack, draw the elbows out nice and wide, chin down. Anything you want to do here to release is good. You can sway your pelvis out left to right. You can pick your toes up and wave them left to right across the ceiling. And then nice and easy, let's press back to tabletop. The classic preparatory posture for headstand, Shirshasana, is our dolphin pose. So we'll do a few versions of this to see where we're at. Now version number one is let's actually, let's start with the hard stuff and then get a little bit easier as we get warmer. So to start with the hard stuff, however you laid your arm for Sphinx Pose, remember that just a second ago? However you laid that, lay it on the floor like that, like so. Okay, then step your, your right one, let's say, and take your left one back, so it's halfway in between um, your right elbow and your, your, like your elbow and your knee distance-wise, but it's on the left side, and it's in chaturanga. 
So you got one arm in dolphin pose, one arm in chaturanga, both elbows squeeze in. Now, what can, how can this help us? Well, this can teach us how to integrate the shoulders first when the arms are doing different things. So your awareness of the shoulders is not predicated on the arms being a certain way. Now take the shoulder blades together and notice like this is the big tendency is to be really knock, rocked down on this right side. Get it even. Take the shoulder blades together, squeeze that left elbow in, get your heart to face exactly down, and even out the distribution of your muscle energy and your mental energy between both of these arms. So even that out here and do it with the breath. And then stay working on this because this can be quite intense or tuck the toes and lift up and back for dolphin. Same thing here, press down, integrate the shoulders on the back, release back of the head. Now tilt the sitting bones way up to the sky, bend your knees, lift your heels. And soften down. So if that was a breeze for you, you probably already know how to do headstand. <laughs> um, let's go to the other side. Like I said, if you have questions, please, be in contact with me. I would love to answer them in any way I know how to. Set your left arm down. Okay, and the same thing. And know if, if you want to go out, that's so natural. It's like when you turn on a faucet and the water goes down, after it hits the floor, it also goes out. So it like disperses its energy. So that's what the elbows are gonna want to do when they start being asked to take the weight of the body in that relationship to gravity. You need to do the opposite of that, to hug them in. Now the muscles of your shoulders back here might be so tight that you can't actually wrap your elbows in. That's how tight the, sho the, the shoulder area might be. That's okay, that's not actually a limitation. That's just what's going on with your body right now. You need to learn to work around that. So no matter where the elbows are, their muscular energy should be hugging and wrapping in. And now, with that in mind, let's go back into the other side. Set everything up. Squeeze the shoulder blades on the back and know, like the topsy-turvy thing, get your heart level in space. And if you're one of these people in Chaturanga where your arm bone likes to be soft and heavy to the floor, heavy deltoid, roll it back so that this part of your chest is always open right on the front of the armpit. Now stay here, push down, squeeze in, and that should actually get your heart a little lifted. You should feel more secure in the torso. And that's why I say staying here is also quite a bit of work because you're holding it all together. Now, if you're ready to go on, tuck up, go back. Try to be even, try to set your heart evenly. Try to feel where the mounds of your shoulders are, the top of it where like that little angel or devil would sit in that, I don't know, like that scenario and get those even in space. And then lower down. And you gauge how challenging that is for you. You don't need to go the, the most. See where your sixes are, your sevens are, play in that area. Last version of dolphin pose. Hopefully we aren't exhausted. Now we're gonna do the headstand version. Personally, I like to tuck my pinky inside, if that makes any sense, so that I have a flat base here. You might not be like that. So test it out for yourself, like what your base is, how you like the wrapping of your hands. When you get a little bit more adept at it, you can start to play with the symmetry of that too and, and even it out and learn all the different ways, which is fun. Totally throws your pose off. So interlock the hands. Just a little bit of a cusp here and then Wherever your elbows can wrap in, you set them on the floor, and then you try to get a squeeze of them toward each other, and that's recruiting these muscles of your arms and the chest muscles. So getting really strong through there, and we strengthened those chest muscles earlier when we did these things, like in plank pose. So do more of them if you can't feel those muscles. And uh, from here, push down, squeeze in, yes. Lengthen the spine, so can you feel that? Part of the pose is just learning what it feels like to be upside down. So now we take half the body upside down and this is your headstand prep. So oftentimes we go deep into the shoulders and we get sad there. <laughs> Push out, 
Squeeze the elbows toward each other, lengthen the back of the neck, tilt the sitting bones way up, way up, way up to the sky. Press down, squeeze the elbows in. And release. And now, my friends, we have made it over to the wall. So gather your yoga mat up, and that's where we'll meet. We'll do two things with headstand here at the wall. And I like to break the pose into two different sections just because that's how I learned it. And uh, I was really afraid of headstand for a really long time. Like the day we did it in teacher training, I was the one crying <laughs> instead of participating. And just in general, inversions have not really been my thing. So getting through it, I took advice from a lot of teachers. I was like scouring the internet for all of these ways that I could learn how to do headstand. And ultimately, like how you learn how to do anything, you just learn it by yourself. So this is my by yourself way that I learned how to do headstand. And the first component I think is really important is that you need to let your body experience being upside down in the pose, just so it can orient itself and understand. Even on a neurological level, that's important. So I definitely don't recommend you doing this by yourself the very first time. Like you should have someone preferably with experience doing headstands helping you with it and uh, or a, a really good friend and get the base secure so we just did this and that's why it should feel so comfy and familiar to you is that you press down you squeeze in and now when we were working in those other dolphin poses you remember what that felt like so be, let that advise, let that experience advise how far you go here. Come on up into your dolphin. Okay, push, squeeze the elbows in, walk in, and then walk in enough, even if your back curls like a little roly-poly, that's okay, so nestle the head down. Now you want the forearms to be pressing more than the head, so push out of it, let the head come, and then just pull in towards the wall, and I have, a lot of experience going up. So that was me going up, but you might kick up or, you know, when it's so easy to have your friend help you, it's not even funny. So, you know, just do it that way. You can also start not as close to the wall here. Okay, so you can start like a few inches and then that will give you space to over kick it. And you can work there. And I suggest working in that version of headstand for a good few times so you can really start to understand like what does it feel like, what are the requirements, what do you need to work on, that'll give you a lot of information right there. Then, after you practice, practice that a bunch of times, if someone told you to tuck your tailbone, you'd be able to do it, like that, that's how many times you practice that. Then, you need to pull away from the wall. What I see a lot of students getting cut up on is that they do the wall version a lot and then they work a few inches away from the wall, they kick up to the wall, and they're trying to pull off of it and they're not having a lot of success. Totally normal. Uh, and that's because you want to integrate on the way into it and that will make sure that the foundation is strong enough to hold you securely in your own balance where you're not haphazardly getting into the posture and then just hoping that you'll be able to pull into it. So when you're ready for this, if you're not ready for it, still watch because it's an interesting way to learn what's next. If you are ready for it, you move away from the wall. If you're psyched out about that, be close enough to it that the wall could catch you. And then you do all of the same things. You push, you squeeze, you draw up. And this is why I'm just saying like hamstring openness is so crucial because then you walk in and your hamstrings need to be open enough that your pelvis can pull right over your shoulders and your toes can lift. And then this is where you stay. Just breathe. This will happen only when the pelvis is stacked right over the shoulders. You push through the forearms and eventually all the way up. Then, if you're choosing to practice, 
and you come out and have a little bow. So trying to keep all of that stuff. So that second component we'll call the headstand tuck. That is actually harder than the headstand itself, but it's going to make you feel what it feels like that you hold yourself up there, not the wall. You hold yourself up there and you just get a little acquainted with it over time, then start to take one or both legs up. Trust me, you're going to fall backwards. That's such a natural part of it because you're learning where the tipping point is and you know, we don't come out of the womb knowing this, so it's trial and error. And uh, hopefully you have something to play with, so take a pause in this video and try something. And then when you're ready to continue, join your mat back up where you were, and we'll continue on our bellies. Okay, so we'll get ready to do our closing stretches. And when we meet on the belly, we'll start by stretching out through the shoulders. So take the, um, Let's start the right side. So take the right arm out with, when you look out to the side, your middle finger, elbow, and shoulder should be pretty in line. And then ground the right ear. And if this is too much on your shoulders for some reason, get like a stack of blankets and give yourself a little pillow. That might feel nice. Then resting there, take the left hand to the floor, start to roll open. And this is where there's like a lot of different variations here. So as you tune into what's going on in your shoulders, feel free to drop the left knee to the inside. Feel free to stack it. When the shoulder starts to feel really good and warm and open, you can start to take the foot behind. Now the point is to relax everything in the upper back here. So if at any point you feel yourself grabbing or clenching, then move out of it until you don't feel that. And so you become like BFFs with all of your stretches. And if you want a little bit more, take the left arm up, spin the thumb towards your toes and drop it over. And when you get super open, you can start to slide the right foot to the floor too, as if you wanted to turn the pelvis totally over to the floor. And then release carefully. And set up for the other side. So, left arm open, you just intuit that in space, you get it all lined up, and then you spin open. And you know you can drop it to the inside, step it to the top, or take it behind. And just relax completely through, you should also feel like a stretch in your left chest. And you can float the right arm up, flip it, take it behind. And then gently releasing through this, coming back. Okay, second to last pose. You notice that we're getting pretty calm and slow now, so enjoy this. Take cactus arms, left ear to the yoga mat. Again, you can use a blanket. Slide right leg open to half frog pose. You have a little sag to the inner knee, so that none of the muscles are gripping here. Breathe into your tummy. And from here, Lift away from the floor with your chest. Thread the left arm underneath the right. And then we're turning the skull down. Lift the right arm up and over. And then play around here like it feels different to different people. So, you know, sometimes it's nice to try to get both shoulder blades down. You want to feel something where the ribs can actually soften in one direction, so over to the right, and they feel very free from the direction of the pelvis, which is going over to the left. And from here, return to the tummy. And take the other side. So half frog pose, left knee opens, and you just relax as best you can.
in your own time. Lifting up, threading the right arm underneath, and then taking the skull back down, and you just start to roll open. And I always like to free the under side of my right ribs in this, in, the, in this version of the twist. So like, let my right ribs scooch out towards my right hand. And then from here, we'll actually complete the roll onto our backs. So you can take the left leg down, step the feet in and just shimmy your way to the center of the yoga mat. And hopefully you're ready to rest. <laughs> So from here, step out into your Shavasana. Shavasana is any resting posture that feels good enough that you can release and relax all the muscles in your body. So sometimes it's good to get creative, like put your legs up onto things, onto an ottoman if you're at home, like how nice is that? And then really truly today, even though this is just a YouTube video online, give yourself the privilege of a Shavasana. Drop deep into the floor. And be completely unconcerned with any of your life's problems. Let every cell of your body be experienced in that way, like all of your problems have completely lost their weight. And if you choose to pick up your problems again after Shavasana, that's okay. We each have the right to do that, and we'll each probably do it in our own ways, so there's no judging it. But let go of them right now. And so even just letting ourselves try something new like headstand and figure out all of the ways that we're built for it and not built for it. Every moment of it is fun. And hopefully there are experiences you've had in today's practice that will help you establish this pose for yourself in a healthy, functional way. and help you also understand other poses that use the same principles and the same movements. So start waking up your body. Fingers and toes start. Wrists and ankles follow. And gently soft on the hips, slide your feet in. A little left to right can be good. And then we'll roll over to either side, whatever side works for you. From here, press up to a seat. Thank you for joining in today's headstand class. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. And if you have questions, comments, please leave them in our comment section. And have a wonderful day. Namaste.